I don't have insurance at that time. I had some special health savings account. So that's 200 bucks a month. And after doing that for six months, I said, I'm not, I'm not going to pay for this. I can't afford $200 to have, have nice, lubricated, wet eyes. <laughs> it's, you take it for advantage, but if you have dry eyes, it's miserable. So I had to do an eye drop, basically, to keep my eyes lubricated, which also helped my eyes heal. But because my eyes weren't really healing properly, they had to give me a steroid drop. And that steroid drop basically caused a scarring around my eye where that buffing device went. And I had this huge circular scar around my eye, like a donut, right over my pupil. And <clears throat> your pupil will r grow at nighttime and it will kind of shrink during the day so that you can have enough light come into your eyeball. So during the day, there's no issues in my eyes. I can see all the tree branches fine. But at night, I didn't realize this until I was driving one night, every light that came into your, into your, your sight of vision blew up like 6 to 12 feet beyond the size of that normal light, and you couldn't see anything. It was huge halos, ridiculous halos. So driving at night was horrific. And the, and the real reason that I discovered my eyes having so much issues was I went on Pirates of Caribbean with my wife Candace, and I actually couldn't see like the pirates, and the, I couldn't see the images of the um, animatronic guys because there's no light coming into my eye because the scar tissue around my pupil was basically dis uh, distributing the light incorrectly, so the light wasn't shattering into my eye and it wasn't going into, so I couldn't see anything in pitch black. It was being like blind. So this was really, really frustrating because you had dry eyes, you couldn't see. So I, this was 2008, this was about six months after surgery, and I had to accept the fact that I wasn't ever really going to see at night again. I went to the eye doctor, the eye doctor said, oh, this is common, but hopefully it goes away in about six months, it may take a year. So just keep using eye drops, keep using these drops. So I did that for one year, didn't really improve. So she just, she prescribed this, another drug, which was a drop in my eye, which is supposed to shrink the pupil so that it, the pupil would always stay within that scar tissue lining so that the light would always come in properly and I can see sharply. That, that has side effects too, which make you sleepy and drowsy. You know, I'd fall asleep every time I would put them in my eyes to watch a movie. This was in 2008, so we are about four years ahead of us. So I've kind of got frustrated with this eye surgery after the last four years that finally I said, the only thing that can cure me is God. That's the only way, because I'm out of luck <laughs> without him. So I, I've struggled with, I think like anybody, you struggle with the authenticity of people being healed. You question that. I know I do. I, I see somebody, oh, I'm healed of my sore arm. Sure you are. It's the mindset. It's not real. But I, I gave... I gave uh, my heart, and I just said, Lord, the only way this is going to happen, I, I can't be healed without God's work within my eyes. So two weeks ago, like Bobby has asked me to talk about, <laughs> two weeks ago, um, <laughs> there was a guest speaker, I believe it was that, that week, it was November 4th, um, a guest speaker came out and had a conversation in prayer time and basically said, if someone needs healing, if someone needs to be healed of something, just come on up, come on up to, uh, to receive a prayer. And of course you stand there like, I'm not going up there. I'm just going to stand here. I don't want to go up in front of everybody. I think you feel nervous or something, but there's something holding you back. You don't want to go up in front of the stage. You don't want to admit that you want something. I don't know what it is, but it's just like, restrictive power, something evil just doesn't want you to go up there. But I think I spent, you know, three minutes, and the guy, he spoke up and said, anyone, anyone, you know, people would walk up, anyone, 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 just come. I think I was the last person eventually to come up. It doesn't matter. I finally got up here. And uh, Bobby was the first person to come over and pray for me. And I had prayer with Grandma Pat, too, uh, Pat, Patricia Hobby. She prayed for me like few months ago. Um, so it's something I've been praying for, but this particular day, Bobby came up to me, and he, uh, he prayed for me, and he asked me what I was asking for prayer, and I said, this is what I'm praying for. My eyesight has been just horrible. I can't see, and I'm just asking, and I'm praying, and 
I, I felt like God can do something, but I didn't have a lot of faith still. It's like weak, weak, weak faith, I think, with any sort of miraculous healing. But uh, Bobby prayed for me, and I, I just closed my eyes, and I was just praying. And at, in, in a church like this, there's really low lighting, so when you look at a light or a light bulb, everything usually has a huge halo around it, in this setting especially. So this blue light on the speaker has a pretty significant halo around it if you're looking at it. So that's kind of like my key point that it'll look at during a service to see how bad that eyesight vision is. But I remember praying, and I had my eyes closed, and I had Bobby pray for me. And it was a fairly, fairly simple prayer. Um, just ask for healing. I, I still ask God for healing. And I closed my eyes, and I didn't want to open them because I didn't want to know at that second. I kind of wanted to expect if I wait longer, it's gonna, maybe better things will happen. But it was the, it was the, when I opened my eyes, I was standing here in the, in the altar, and I looked up, and there's these two lights right here that you can see, and typically every light that I look at has a huge halo around. And when I opened my eyes, those were sharp lights that didn't have halos around them. And I, it was awesome. It was sweet. Yeah, you can clap for that, because that was sweet. That, that was, uh. And, uh, and, of course, the first thing I thought was, well, my eyes are adjusting. The pupil is, right now, it's, it's a lot um, smaller, I believe, because your eyes are closed, or they're, they're wider. So there's some sort of reason for it. I'll close my eyes again, because I don't want to believe that it just happened. But I opened my eyes again, and the sharp eyes. I started going, I better look around the room, because I want to look at every light bulb in this, in this uh, <laughs> sanctuary to make sure everything. There weren't Christmas lights on, but there were these lights on the ceiling, and there was lights on the wall. And every one of them were sharp. And the, the cool thing is they actually get a different color. They're, they're more of a, a darker color because you actually see, like, the, the bulb. You don't see the halo around it. And it was basically perfect eyesight within the church, which I haven't had probably for forever. It was awesome. It was sweet. And immediately I thought, don't take it away. Don't take my vision away, Lord. And I, and I struggled with this going, Lord, don't take it away. You just gave me good sight. Don't take it away. And I kind of struggled with, with like having this prayer like that. And I kind of kicked myself in the pants and we're like, God wouldn't take it away. I mean, that's not what's going to happen. You know, it'd be stripped from me from, a, from the devil or, or the Satan. It's not going to be God that takes it away. So I was just praising God, like, God, don't let it be taken away from me. Just, just keep his eyesight. And so um, as I thought about it, this revelation came over me of, I matter to God. Like, God spent this amount of time. He's healed me of my vision sight. And, and to feel like God spent a specific amount of time with an individual or he gave one person a second of healing, it's a remarkable feeling to have this sort of sense of, I matter. And everyone matters. But when that revelation comes over you, it's emotional, and I haven't had this before, but tears filled in my eye. <laughs> and, and it was overwhelming, and I was thinking to myself, is this happening? Like, am I, am I going to choke up right here? And tears just flowed down my eye, and I started crying. And my heart poured out to the Lord. And I was just overwhelmed, and I think Tammy came over and prayed for me. Tammy Drake, if you're in the house, there's somewhere around here. If you don't know Tammy, Tammy's awesome. She will just pray for you, and she loves on you. And she prayed for me, and just more tears came over me. And I don't know how much time passed, but for the next, like, hour or so of just being drenched in the Lord, just having that overwhelming, like, feeling of the Lord with you, it was being blasted by the Spirit. And then if you, you don't know what's going on when you're up here. You don't know who's praying behind you, but we have some uh, friends and some teenagers who are in from out of town who they haven't really prayed for people, and they came up and prayed for me. They were overwhelmed overwhelmed by seeing me up here, and I guess you could see something when the Spirit's acting with somebody. Um, this is for me being new to understanding what the Spirit does, but when people are being drenched with the Spirit or being filled with the Spirit, it becomes relevant, and people see it. And they can understand it. I guess they can feel it. And so after service, I remember walking around, and Matt Libby was like, dude, I, I can see that you got hit with the Spirit today. I'm like, dude, like, is this obvious? Like, do people see this? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know, like, you can see things happen to people, but that's, like, the power of the Spirit. And it's really, a, it, was, it was a healing 
to one sense, like a physical healing of my eyes, but it's also this inner emotional, like, relationship with the spirit that got healed because you question it and you fight it and you judge. I mean, I, I, I think it's just natural to look at people and question. But when this happened to me, this sort of openness to what the spirit actually does and how present it is, and it cured some things within my life from the past where I looked at judgment and I question things and it sort of opens your eyes to realize not on a physical side but just realize that the spirit is 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 here it's strong and I'm sure there's people out here that question the spirit they question what happens it's I, I was there I there's going to be times that you struggle with that it's it's not that you're a bad person I think it's it's just you want proof you want to see it and I'm somebody who's seen it and I can if you don't want to talk to me or ask me any questions, but I've been there and I've seen it and it's been an awesome experience. And I told Bobby about it yesterday and uh, he had, he did not tell me, I mean, I expected him to pull me up here and, and talk about it, I guess. It's what, it's what he does. <laughs> he puts you on the spot, but that was this awesome experience. I hope it's cool. And I, and I took a good 20 minutes. I'm happy to take time from you, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you. 